All right, everybody, this is Ross. I have a new fruit that I would like to share with you all. Um, it's a mulberry, but it's not a uh, your typical mulberry that you might think of, like uh, the red mulberry, um, or let's say a Pakistani type that's quite long. This is a mulberry that is of a different species. So it's not your Morris alba. It's not your Morris rubra. Um, it's not your Morris macrura. I think that's how you pronounce those. This is a Morris nigra. So this is the black mulberry. And I actually have some mulberries here that are ripe on my potted tree. This is not a variety or not a species, I should say, that really withstands the cold here. At least I have heard sort of mixed reviews. I don't know what to believe, but what I do know for sure is it doesn't really like this climate. It really demands a specific climate. Um, the people who have been growing this species the longest, there is a lot of information out there on it. And they really do say it doesn't like uh, more humid conditions. It just is a very specific tree. It's a slower grower. Uh, it's really quite dwarf, which is why I like this particular tree in a pot. And I've actually propagated one of these by cutting this winter in anticipation that the tree is now reaching maturity. I may actually see some quality fruits this year because we did do a video last year on it uh, showing you guys the fruits and I really wasn't all that impressed with the fruit. And I wonder, uh, oh actually it went, um, it soured on me, it fermented on me. There may even be uh, even been some SWD within the fruit. so. It really wasn't the best accurate representation and I really wanted to hold judgment before I had some ripe fruits. This season, it grew really well, um, although it did take some damage because we had some frost that came in here, uh, late frost, and I had some figs laid out on the patio. I had this mulberry laid out on the patio and I threw tarps over top of them to protect them from the frost, but the tarps damaged some of the buds. And if you damage some of these buds, that's where the fruit forms. So it forms on that last year's growth on those buds. So if you damage last year's growth, you just are gonna have less fruit. You don't wanna, I find you don't really want to um, prune this particular species of mulberry all that much because it really does just in a sense really limit your production. So I took maybe one or two, I think I took one cutting off and propagated that indoors this winter. And so far it looks like a successful propagation. Um, it's still in a one gallon size pot. They grow really slowly, but I have it outside here adjusted. And if it really is as good as I think, or as good as people say it's gonna be, right? This is supposed to be Morris Nigra, the king of mulberries. It's supposed to be the best tasting mulberry by far. Like people, out of all the things that this thing struggles with, people go really far out of their way to grow and ripen these fruits. So I figure, you know, these people aren't nuts, right? There's gotta be some truth in there. And I think I have a pretty decent fruit here. It's not exactly ripe. Uh, well, I should say perfectly ripe, excuse me because if I show you here on the fruit, there is this redder part here towards the top and it should be black like it is on the rest of it. So I imagine it's not fully ripe, but this is what they look like. Um, a pretty decent size to this mulberry. Oddly, um, visually it's very strange, um, quite different than other mulberries I've ripened here and have eaten. Um, so I can tell you with certainty that this is a Morris Niger. It does grow very slowly. It does have unusual buds as well. The buds look very different on the tree itself. And also this fruit looks extremely different. Um, so let me try it here and see what the deal is. Again, this is really the first experience I've ever had with Morris Niger. I mean, I've read about it. I've uh, read quite a bit about it actually. I've been growing it now for really three or four seasons in a pot in this uh, seven to 10 gallon size pot. And this is really my first tasting here. So here we go. Wow.
That is really good. <laughs> that is really good. Hmm. Wow. So what to make of this thing? Wow. First off, I want to say it's better than any mulberry I've ever had. By a considerable amount. Um, I think there's another one on here that I can probably eat. And I don't think that one was perfectly ripe. Actually, I don't think this one's perfectly ripe either. Hmm. Damn, I kind of wish I didn't pick this. But... Uh, because it's not perfectly ripe, I think there's a little bit of a, a green flavor that I'm picking up. You know what I mean? How like certain unripe fruits have, you know, kind of uh, more vegetable-like flavors. I know at least in the case of the fig, the fig um, kind of gets that latex flavor. This isn't like a latex flavor, but it tastes sort of green, like a vegetable. Um, so it is sweet but I feel like it could really have a lot more sweetness to it. And the flavor would obviously be quite better um, if it were perfectly ripe. I really just came across this berry. I didn't even think I had ripe berries on this plant. And to my surprise, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is like a huge surprise here. So let me try this one. Yeah, it's quite good. It's really sweet, and you can tell when a mulberry is ripe, I guess, is when there's that, al that acid and sweet balance, right? So if it's really acidic, which you can pick them in more of like the red state, um, then they have more acidity and not as, not as much sweetness to them. Um, if you let them go and get perfectly ripe, a lot of that acidity goes away, and you, you have a lot more sweetness. So that one was uh, more acidic because it was definitely less ripe than the first one. But overall, I'm really impressed. I don't exactly know how to describe the flavor, to be honest with you. Um, it really does taste like a mulberry, but there's some extra something there. There's an extra complexity and extra something that I enjoy further than what I've tasted in, in more. And a lot of the mulberries I've ripened here or I've had from other people. Um, it's just another, I think, another level to it. Now, that fruit to me does give me a sense that that is a really good fruit, you know? Um, so I personally think that could be, I think when it's perfectly ripe, in terms of all the fruits I grow, that's probably like a nine out of 10. I wouldn't say it's the best fruit I grow I wouldn't say it's an average fruit I grow. I would say it's somewhere in between average. It's above average, let's say. Um, I would say probably it's somewhere around the quality of maybe like a blueberry, a raspberry, a strawberry, you know, something that's really well ripened. If you like those fruits, you're gonna like this one. Um, is it worth growing in a pot and really giving it all this special attention and, and feeding it and caring for it and kind of waiting for the, the tree to get you know, a decent harvest on it. Plus this backside here of the tree, for whatever reason, a couple branches just decided to defoliate and drop its fruit. Plus it's not really the most productive plant, as I've mentioned. It could have been more productive, but overall, I mean, even some fruit here is dropping. There's uh, three fruits here at least that have fallen off the, uh, the tree. Um, so overall, not too impressed with the tree itself. I think it's really in the fruit that you could be impressed with. And um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it probably is still worth growing. Would I keep multiples of it? I don't know. Probably not. I think we should hold judgment and really make that decision. And I'll probably update you guys on like an episode of Fruit Talk, maybe sometime down the road on some kind of tour that we do. Maybe we'll look at this tree again at some time in the future. But uh, for me, I probably will hold judgment until I get one or a couple fruits that were ripened perfectly. And I can really get an idea of the flavor better than what I had just now to make a better uh, accurate assessment to say, all right, is this worth it or not? I'm sorry, I wish I could have uh, given you guys an opinion either way. But right now, I think it's somewhere in the middle. It's somewhere neutral 
um, rather than on either side of the argument. And um, But overall, like I said, the fruit's really good. It has a lot of that berry flavor, an interesting berry flavor that is like a mulberry plus something else. So, you know, it's really quite tasty. It is very sweet. Um, it is quite complex, almost a little chalky it felt too, it, it tasted. It was a little bit chalky, a little bit green. Um, yeah, again, I would say it's probably when fully ripened, like a nine out of 10, which is a great rating um, for any fruit here that I grow. That's a really high rating. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much here for watching this, this video on the Morris Niagara Mulberry. I'll bring you guys around real quick and show you the tree itself. And then we're going to call it here on this video. As you can see down here, they have really nice leaves. Um, I feed this tree quite well. We have some lower growth down here. And here's the fruits. And they obviously turn, I guess, from this green to a yellow state, to a red, and then to the black, like normal mulberries would. And uh, you can get an idea here of the production. Not the most productive, as I mentioned, but up here, you, you can see there's not really any fruits on these new branches higher up on the tree. And I think that has a lot to do with me breaking off. You can see different points here where I broke off a few buds. And the tree, you'll see when the tree goes dormant, you'll see that there's different buds along the tree and um, certain buds will produce fruit and others will not. And it's usually the buds higher up on the branches that will produce the fruit, uh, whereas the other branches are vegetative. So yeah, there you go. And it's been in this smaller pot here for, like I said, three or four years. It's a seven gallon size. I have it in the same you know, material here it's uh, half peat or half compost. I'm sorry, half pine bark. We feed it pretty often in the beginning of the season, and I I stop sometime in June. You can also see the buds along the tree and how different these look, and how big they are. Actually, there's a good little example of a bud that you'll see in the winter. Um, and yeah, so that's the Morris Niger guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. You want to see more updates on this tree. I'll keep you guys updated. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see everybody soon. I hope to talk to you guys in the future a lot more about mulberries uh, because we've grafted quite a few this year. And uh, yeah, talk to you guys soon. Take care.